This is the morning office for February 29th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to help and save us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. On the topic of silence, today I have another quote from one of the authors I've been reading. The silent person is one who cannot defend him or herself. The so-called strong person is the one who speaks and crush, crushes and drowns others with his or her words. It's worth meditating on why it is that one who is silent is powerless even to defend him or herself. So often we use words as defenses against one another and indeed as weapons against one another to wound one another. One who is silent appears to be defenseless, to take on all of those negative words, negative implications, negative imputations without really having any way to say, no, that isn't true, let alone uh, to, to respond in kind. And perhaps in that is the key. There is a certain nonviolence in silence. One who would wound with words does so usually with the full expectation of being wounded in return, 
or at least to being open. The one who lives by the sword dies by the sword. So one who is silent is in some sense saying, I am choosing not to participate in that cycle of violence and destruction, but rather is choosing to be weak for the sake of peace. I ask your prayers for the day, the world, and the church. Pray for those around us who have secret disabilities, those who have addictions, those who struggle with their mental health, those who struggle with broken relationships. Pray for them, for the healing that they seek. Pray for the world, for all those places around the world where the brokenness of relationships is lived out on a global scale, where old hurts and old wounds from hundreds and thousands of years ago continue to divide neighbors and lead them to violence. And pray for the church, for which Jesus prayed unity, but which seems to be stuck indefinitely in a cycle of disunity, schism, and mutual recrimination. Pray for the unity of the church. O Lord, O Lord strong and mighty, Lord of hosts and King of glory, cleanse our hearts from sin, keep our hands pure, and turn our minds from what is passing away, so that at the last we may stand in your holy place and receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.